Back when I started watercolors, I remember feeling extremely awkward with my brushes at first, not knowing how to hold them, how to use them on paper, how much water and paint to load them with. So to help you guys pass this awkward stage and encourage you to pick up your brush and paint along with me, I'm not going to demonstrate strokes on a blank piece of paper. Instead, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing with my paintbrushes, why and how, and I'm going to do this with a demo for this beautiful watercolor sky that you can very well paint even if you're just getting started. Hey there, this is Françoise, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Since I'm prepping my painting now, I want to address paper, and you're going to see it's a crucial part of the whole experience with paintbrushes and watercolors in general. Paper is going to impact your ability to use a paintbrush with confidence because with a medium like watercolors, paper can make or break a painting. There are different quantities and the lower ones make, make you feel like everything you're doing is wrong, even the way you make strokes, when sometimes it really is just a paper. That's dangerous in the sense it could get you doubting yourself and getting discouraged. This is why for paintings that require to use a lot of water like this watercolor sky here, or even just any painting, I'll personally go with 100% cotton cold pressed paper because I know I'm going to get better results with that and as a consequence I can focus more on mixing my colors right for instance or using my paintbrushes to their full potential and make strokes that are going to make it easy to paint beautiful art. As extra help for clean and easy brush strokes, I use masking tape and that helps keep my sheet from moving around as I paint which is nice. Today I want to use my confetti watercolor set by Art Philosophy. The watercolors you use will impact your brush strokes work much less than paper, but it's always better using a brand you already tried, if you have, so you can focus on practicing the strokes. I trace my horizon line and I can get started. I'm getting my mixes ready for the field. When I mix colors like that, I tend to use paintbrushes that I plan on using in my painting. I heard some say it's better to save your good brushes for the painting itself, but I haven't really noticed my paintbrushes wearing out because of that. I'm mixing yellow, brown and dark brown and I have a light shade, a dark one and one in between with those three, so that's great for contrast. I don't make those mixes too thick or too watery, you can see they're just creamy. This is because I plan on painting the field wet on dry since it's a small area of the sheet, so that consistency will be great for what I want to achieve. I'm also using this small round brush with natural hair fibers because it holds water well and will allow me to paint this area nicely and produce various strokes and effects. I'm holding it as I would a pencil. Pointing it out may seem strange, but in fact it feels so awkward when you're not used to painting that I think it's worth mentioning. As I'm filling up the space below the line, I make horizontal lines. I let the brush glide on the paper without pressing hard. There is no need. If you feel you need to press harder, it's probably your paint is too thick and hard to apply, or you're using a very old or low quantity brush. I go back and forth with my brush when I want to make sure I got in all the nooks and crannies, especially near where the masking tape is. Now I'm picking up this light brown tone I mixed and I start shaping the rows in this field. I make straight lines quickly, try not to overthink it and again try not to press hard. To make it look like the rows are closer to us in that bottom left corner, I press slightly more there to create a wider line, but as I get away and across to the other side, I slightly lift my brush to make sure the line is thinner there. It may not look very obvious in the painting and yet it's the type of detail that makes a difference. I repeat with darker paint. You can add a little bit of pure paint to your light brown mix if you want to save your darker brown tone for last like I plan on doing. I didn't mention it but all these steps need to be done while the paper there is still wet to give a chance to the paint to blend into the rest. This is why you should be careful and not wait too long after applying the initial layer of yellow. With my dark brown, I'm going to create depth in these lines I traced and to make it interesting, I gently dab my brush here and there on and around the lines. It's going to make the field look more real, that's why making those rows look uneven with dots of paint is helpful, for instance to suggest grass growing in different lengths and directions. I keep doing this and darkening some areas until I'm satisfied. You can see the paint bled a bit into the background and really makes this field look more real than just a plain background with harsh and plain brown lines on top. I let the field dry completely before moving on to the sky. 
The sky is going to be different. We're going to proceed wet and wet, and we're going to use other paint brushes, including a larger brush than the one I had here, simply because this area is bigger. And we're also going to use a brush with a fine point to create detail. I mix up shades of orange, pinks, blue and pink to create purple, blue, and blue and black to create some kind of an indigo shade. I made these creamy mixes again, but here I'll add a bit of water later using a wet brush because for wet and wet work like this, working with watery mixes helps the paper stay wet much longer I found. First, I pre-wet the paper with a flat brush, not mandatory at all, it's just convenient for larger areas, but I'm really just using this one because I have it. Whatever the type of brush, make sure to go back and forth and get into all these small areas of the paper. If you have a hard time working with a wet and wet technique, controlling water or just keeping things clean and neat, I'll link a helpful video up here. I'm going to start with my lighter colors. I pick up my melon shade with this bigger round brush I was talking about. Again, here I tap the brush on the paper. It's not a must since all the colors are going to blend together and since this is the initial and very light layer, but I do this because it takes more time. It's slow, precise, and helps see where I'm going, where I want to apply this or that color. I'm observing my reference photo too as I paint, so I'm taking my time. It's up to you to see if you want to apply the paint by just swiping the brush on your paper, or if you want to do it like me, tapping it on the paper. I do the same with my pinks. Up there, it was spreading a bit much, so I just cleaned my brush in clean water, soaked most of the water out by dabbing it on a piece of paper towel. Then I swiped the brush with some pressure onto the area the paint was spreading on, and that way I was able to lift some paint. I'm about to finish applying all the colors, and now I want to keep applying colors, only this time I'll be using thicker mixes. Thicker ones because for one, I want to add contrast, and thicker mixes mean darker colors when everything dries. Secondly, we have to keep in mind that even though my first layers were watery, the paper is starting to dry even just a bit, so we can't keep adding watery paints to it. It would create blooms, and we would have a hard time building up that contrast and finishing the sky. Feel free to tell me in the comments if this makes sense and if this is helpful because I feel I would have liked getting detailed info like this when I started out, but I wanted to make sure you guys actually like the way I explain things and that you find it useful. I add a bit more of my darker blue and I'm starting to make some quick and curvy strokes to mimic clouds and give an impression that they're descending upon us if this term makes sense. I made some more strokes there with purple but the camera wasn't filming then. Now I switch to my detailing brush. I'm making tiny dots of dark pink on my light orange area to increase contrast and make it look like there are some distant clouds there. Keep in mind the paint should be thicker since the paper is drying more and more. I overlap my colors and doing that, plus working on contrast with thicker, darker colors and varying your brush strokes is what gives the sky a beautiful look. You can see I'm dabbing the brush in one place, then I swipe it quickly with the same technique I used for the rose, making one end thicker than the other using pressure. I even use my natural hair fiber paintbrush again, the one that holds water good, to lift up some paint in the top of the sky, and later to sprinkle a little bit of clear water in that same area to create little blooms. Now I let the sky dry and I'm done with it. If you're not satisfied and your sky was drying too fast, it's better to let it dry completely, re-wet with a clean brush and work on it further. I'm mixing black to my dark blue mix, and I want something thick enough that it's easy to paint with, but still very opaque because I'm going to paint trees where the horizon is. This is also a good trick when your separation between the field and sky like here is not super clean. Again, check out the video I mentioned and linked before to avoid messy separations. I'm using the tip of my detailing brush more here. If you don't have a brush like this one, I really recommend it for this type of work. To add some interest to our field and emphasize contrast in the foreground, I'm going to splatter a little bit of my dark brown mix here, and we're done with this beautiful watercolor sky painting. I hope you enjoyed both the painting and video and tips for how you can use your paintbrushes. If you did, if it helped you understand how to get better, a like, a comment, or sharing this on social media would really help my channel out. Also, if you want to make sure and not miss any of my previous or upcoming tips, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.